So I've been getting a lot of questions on in-ear monitors recently and I thought I would make a video talking about five things that I wish I would have known before I bought custom in-ear monitors. So with that, let's get into it. All right, like I said, it's gonna be five quick things that I wish I would have known before I got custom in-ear monitor. Now before those five things, I wanted to quickly say that this in no way is meant to discourage you from getting in-ear monitors or universal monitors. It's just five things that I wish I would have known and I kind of learned the hard way when I got my first pair of in-ear monitors years and years ago. With that out of the way, let's get into uh, number one. The first thing is going to be getting used to how they feel in your ears. When I got my first pair of in-ears, I didn't expect there to be a period where I had to get used to having acrylic that deep in my ears. I actually ended up having to buy some ear gel and I'll link some ear gel that I use down below. But the first couple of weeks with custom in-ears, my ears were actually sore and primarily my inner like ear canal area just because you haven't had anything that deep in your ear and it's acrylic so it doesn't really squish or move like a universal in-ear monitor would. Going into it, I wish that somebody would have told me that that was something that you'd have to experience and kind of get used to. But once you get used to it, it's, it's great. It's incredible. There's just a like two week period where your ears are kind of sore. The second thing is actually when you're getting your in-ear molds done. So for those of you that don't know, when you get custom in-ears, you go to an audiologist or you can do it at home, but I would recommend going to an audiologist and they squirt a bunch of crap in your ear and basically they get a mold of your inner ear and that's how they make these monitors right here. This is, this is what the inside of my ear canal looks like. And now they have like 3D scanning and everything else, but a lot of people still use the molding way of doing it. And when you get your molds, make sure that you don't have like any allergies or anything, or you're not sick. Basically make sure that your ear canals aren't swollen at all, because when I got my molds, I didn't realize that my right ear was swollen because of allergies. And when I got my in-ears back, I realized quickly that the right ear was a lot looser than the left ear, and that was because the mold itself was smaller because my ear canals were swollen. Having a good seal is kind of the make or break thing if you like them or not. Number three is going to be actually practice putting them in. So unlike universals, you can't just cram them in. And depending on your bend, like if you look at mine, my bend is really, really sharp. So because of that, I actually have to screw my in-ears in and that actually took a couple of weeks to get used to because again, I'm not used to screwing something in my head to be able to listen to them. I was used to just shoving it in and I couldn't do that with these and I, I realized that pretty quick when I got them. Number four is they're actually going to require more cleaning because of how deep they are going in your ears and just because this whole thing is acrylic and it's not foam, you're going to have to spend more time cleaning your in-ears than you would universals. For me, what I personally do is I just take some baby wipes that I get like from Walmart and I get most of the acrylic and I use this brush right here to kind of brush away everything else that I couldn't get with the baby wipe and then scoop the actual ports out with this little scoopy tool that is provided with the in-ears. But all to be said, you're going to have to clean them more than you would universal in-ears. The last tip is going to be every custom in-ear company is going to sound different than others and they're going to sound way different than your universals and that's something that I personally had to get used to. For those of you that don't know, I have two sets of custom in-ears. I have 1964 triple drivers. I have these GH Audio V13 Pros and these are much darker than my triple drivers are. My triple drivers are a lot more bright and these guys are a lot darker. And I actually prefer these darker sounding in-ears, but when I first got them, it took a little bit to get used to because I was used to the bright tinniness of my 1964 ears. Not saying that they're better or worse, it's just it's different and it takes a little bit of getting used to when I get them. That's basically it. Those are five things that I wish I would have known buying custom in-ears that nobody ever told me. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, go ahead and hit the like button down below. And if you haven't yet, feel free to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all the new videos I post on this channel three times a week. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video. 
I'm gonna use the back of my GH Audio in-ear case.